much of what we hear about the plight of American women is false. And some phony claims have been repeated so often, they're almost beyond the reach of critical analysis. That's who I care about. I care about equality. I care about people not imposing their religious beliefs on other people where it does not belong. There's nothing liberal, intelligent, enlightened, civilized, or progressive about shutting somebody up because you don't want other people to hear their opinions. But somewhere along the line, someone changed your perspective, shifted your view like Eve. You took a huge tasty bite of deception. This is what happens when your gospel is according to whoever's at the top of your playlist and the media has become your Bible. Kids so confused by their divorcing parents so confused by dead churches, so confused by humanistic churches, they said, we're going to turn sleazy just to get even. And so those kids are so down, they have to do anything to get up. I think there were certain groups of people who really didn't like the average American family for many reasons, and um, they set out to destroy it, and they've just about done it. If you find yourself cringing, or experiencing negative feelings with regards to this topic, I, I want to make an appeal to you this morning that you do not have a biblical understanding of submission. Yes, we are beautiful and barefoot in the kitchen of grace, pregnant with purpose, baking up praise. Jesus is who we crave. You're listening to the End Times Mama podcast. And now, here's your host, Isa, the End Times Mama. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Isa, and welcome to the second episode of the End Times Mama podcast. Um, I am very embarrassed to admit that the very first episode of the End Times Mama podcast, as well as uh, a podcast that I started with God's Property Radio, Families on the Fringe, was about a year ago, if not longer. Um, I'll explain why it has been so long in a minute, but I just wanted to give it a shot. Again, I love podcasts. I listen to podcasts all the time. I have always wanted to continue on with my podcast plans and I am finally at a point where um, I feel confident doing that. I am going to change things up a little bit and that is something else I will explain a little bit more in a second. But first of all, just wanted to introduce myself. If you have never read or listened to or seen anything I have done, my name is Isa. As I said, I am a blogger at endtimesmama.com. I also just started a YouTube channel recently, which is super fun to do, and I think I'm definitely going to be branching out and trying to get videos out as well. Uh, My point here is, I know it probably seems kind of intense to just be diving into podcasting, blogging, and YouTube, but the thing is, I know how it is as a busy mom, and my primary audience is women and moms. And I know a lot of people don't have time to read a blog, but they might have, you know, four minutes to watch a video or you might have time to watch a video or read a blog, um, but you might be able to listen to a podcast. I personally am a huge audiophile. I listen to podcasts and audiobooks all the time and I also love YouTube and I, uh, (laughs) I read blogs as well. So I'm into all of it. But I also know what it's like to not necessarily, you know, everybody kind of has their medium on the internet that they're into. So I kind of want, just want to be able to reach my audience in however they prefer or can access uh, the kind of encouragement, commentary, knowledge, things that I would like to share. So just a kind of a brief might not be brief once I start talking about it, but uh, I'll try to be a brief explanation of what my ministry is. The idea is it is end times encouragement for mothers. Now, I think of end times as kind of a perpetual state of mind more than like the end is nigh. Like I do have, I feel like I have a, a basic grasp of uh, bi- biblical eschatology and I there are things that need to happen before the revelation of the Antichrist or the new world order actually happens. So I don't think that, you know, it's going to happen tomorrow. I am a pre-wrath believer. So a lot of that is going to definitely influence my outlook. And I do believe whether you're pre-trib or not, that we should always be ready to endure persecution and tribulation for the sake of our Lord and for the testing of our faith, and also be perpetually 
looking to the sky and waiting for his return, you know, both are so important, whether or not you believe that the, the great tribulation that's discussed in, in scripture is going to happen before or after the rapture, or whether or not you, you know, believe in the rapture at all, we should always be looking to Christ and he should always be our ultimate gain. And we should always be seeking, you know, spiritual refinement in whatever situation we're put in. And if you are a mother or a parent in these times, um, just in whatever your eschatological belief is, we live in really intense, crazy times. And the more you know, I definitely write to a group of women and group of people who are what we would, you know, call ourselves like awake or truthers is, you know, everyone's getting kind of tired of that expression, but it, um, people who are kind of aware of the way of the many dangers in this world especially to our children and the false teachings that are out there and the way the new age and feminism has infiltrated the church and are becoming such a huge part of mainstream society and mainstream culture and when I first kind of started to get into this research, especially with like really heavier things like a supernatural worldview and the very real manifestations of evil that we can see playing out just across the world in very high and powerful places, I was really freaked out by it, especially thinking about end times. I've always believed that end times were coming, but I used to be terrified of it. And I speak to a lot of women and a lot of moms who are feeling the same way. I think women in particular, I think men have just kind of have a different reaction to the end times. And especially when our husbands are into it, they're not... They, they can kind of freak us out too and uh, a huge a huge goal of my ministry as well is just to kind of bridge the gap between men and women and husbands and wives and the way that we address these issues because I know what it's like like you know my husband started getting into this kind of research before I did and he would freak me out it would be really intense to talk to him about things that I just kind of wanted to stick my head in the sand and think about you know baby stuff and mom stuff and women stuff and even if I, even if I didn't necessarily doubt what he was talking about, um, I think men are so like gung ho and problem solving oriented where, you know, women were, were more emotional and were more nurturing and we're also used to being cared for and protected by our husbands. So when our husbands are thinking about these big, scary things, it can, you know, it's just kind of intense. And then of course there are a lot of women like me who are just dive right into the research. Um, as I said, I didn't do it right away, but there was a point where I was, you know, once God kind of took all that fear from me, I got really into it. But at the same time, I, I feel like I approached it differently than some people do in that it wasn't like, I feel like when people first get into the stuff, they have this like desperate urgency to share it with everyone and they're kind of unhappy if other people aren't as interested in it as them. And that's another thing, like lately I feel like I'm probably getting a bit more like vanilla in the things I talk about and speak about and I'm um, writing about and speaking more to just like kind of mainstream current events and, you know, social commentary and um, a lot of the, what like the mainstream is discussing in the political realm in the social realm, I think is incredibly relevant to our faith. And it, I don't know, it's been a crazy, it's been a really crazy year. I said I haven't done this podcast for a year. Uh, 2016 was pretty nuts as if you were anywhere um, other than under a rock, you are probably well aware of that. But I think we are seeing a lot of huge trends towards like really what is ultimately the, the Antichrist New World Order system and whether or not it's all a facade or not that new world order mentality is being challenged right now and there might be you know just with with trump getting elected and conservatives kind of coming out and being like look we're we're so so tired of all this political correctness and all this like denial of the threat of islam and things like that uh, you know i think it is really relevant to you know that i think there are a lot of kind of truth or minded people out there who think that all of it's all fake it's all completely fake and I don't think that's true and that's the thing is and this is you know it's like I've shifted my focus a lot because I think it's really important to keep in mind that we need to remain awake and we need to remain discerning and we need to stay aware of the fact that we're still always susceptible to deception so it's a lot it's a lot more prudent to kind of see what's going on and 
form theories and come up with ideas and keep in mind the possibility that, you know, a huge example I talk about a lot is that, you know, Donald Trump might very well be what everybody says he is or he might be what everybody else says he is. You know, I'm totally not committed to him being this great thing for America and I'm not committed to him being, a, you know, a total New World Order shill either. I'm just kind of trying to see what's going on, hope for the best, you know, kind of take it from there. He obviously represents a lot of things that I feel strongly about, like pro-life issues, Second Amendment issues, um, even vaccines and homeschooling and things like that. Like he is very appealing to somebody like me. And at the same time, that's a good reason to be very wary of him and critical of him. So, you know, I, I think as Christians, this is a lot less glamorous, but we are called to sober mindedness. We are called to a peaceful state of mind, living peaceably. There is nothing wrong with praying to live a peaceable life and that's kind of where I'm at right now and what I want to share with others and encourage you and uh, you know other moms and we have our calling at home to raise our children well there is nothing wrong with hoping for the best while we are still on this earth and at the same time preparing for the worst and I think that's kind of like the perpetual state of mind that we need to be in look when we are abiding in the spirit and following Jesus Christ and learning more about him every day and praying to be, you know, filled with his spirit and grow in the knowledge of his word, whatever is happening in the world around us, we can learn to see things with discerning godly eyes and it doesn't have to be, you know, sometimes there is urgency that we need to convey to the world and to other Christians. I'm not a you know, a tolerant-minded Christian. I think sometimes we need to be very bold about doctrinal issues that are essential to salvation. And there are issues that I feel very strongly about. On the other hand, how we go about doing that has to be led by the Spirit. So all things, all roads lead back to Jesus and all roads have to come from Jesus. Whatever we are researching, talking to people about, thinking about, worrying about, we always need to go back to the cross. So whatever, you know, our opinion, I kind of like, my opinions are like almost my hobby these days because I'm just really at the end of the day trying to grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And that is the thing that has given me reassurance and peace and a, a more sober mind and I feel a more discerning mind towards the kind of end times, fringy, Nephilim, you know, fallen angel kind of things. I just don't feel freaked out or scared by that stuff anymore because I'm going through it from a spiritual perspective. And in a lot of ways, those topics did lead me back to the cross. So that's, you know, kind of that same dynamic I'm talking about, you know. It led me to the cross, and then I also approach that stuff through the cross now. So as promised, that was a very long-winded explanation of my ministry. So just to update you a bit on my life, if you're at all interested why um, I haven't been doing this podcast, and for a long time I wasn't keeping up with my blog either, um, I am a work-at-home mom. I'm a huge, huge, huge proponent of staying at home with your children if you can. I am also an avid defender of women who have to go work out in the home. As for women who choose to work outside the home and choose to focus on their career above raising their children, I personally will say I don't believe that's biblical. I, at the same time, look at Proverbs 31 woman. She was putting a lot of time and energy into both running her household and earning money for it. So I think that earning money for your household can be a huge part of, of keeping your house. And you know, Titus 2, we are called to keep our house. But in this day and age, just the way that modern society works, there's this kind of big like either or that has been, this line has been drawn in the sand a lot by feminism. So I think a lot of people go too far on either extreme as like, oh, it's my right, I can go out and get a job, and like, as if it's oppressive to stay home with your children and to raise your children. I do believe the career-minded woman can still be a fully committed and active parent. So that's just a quick note on that, that, you know, I am a work-at-home mom. I absolutely wish that I could be a full-time mom because it's a full-time job and being a housekeeper is, is a full-time job as well and I'm just starting to homeschool and it's definitely a huge balance. So that on top of a very, very strong uh, calling that I cannot ignore to to blog and do, you know, just do this kind of online ministry 
has always been heavy on my heart and the response I get from the things that I share of women being encouraged by the things I share that is like absolute confirmation to me I hope that doesn't sound super prideful I you know I just give God all the glory for using me to reach people who needed to hear the messages that you know he's given me and the assurance and growth that that he has spoken to me and you know I'm obviously I'm I feel like I'm still a baby Christian in a lot of ways I'm still totally growing and learning and I you know I just have this like almost like insatiable appetite for the word lately I've been trying to read my bible daily and and I've been taking notes and studying it I read with a concordance like just really diving deeper into it and I just I love the bible I feel like it's like you get addicted like the more you read it the more you want it and like I honestly feel like bummed when I have to close it and start to make breakfast and get ready um uh, to see my husband off to work and and uh, get to my own work it's like hard to hard to turn away from the bible I, I just love the words so I you know I just want to share what I'm continuing to learn and continuing to grow in and um, when uh, my whole ministry is just kind of me thinking out loud in a lot of ways and just sharing random little thoughts I get throughout the day that I just kind of expand upon and I love 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 hearing feedback from people who have been encouraged or inspired or have questions or think I should look into certain things you know I grow and learn so much from other from the rest of the body of Christ and it is so valuable and precious to me so this is definitely like an interactive ministry in that way uh, so please don't be a stranger whether or not you have been a faithful reader this whole time or you're just hearing me for the first time like definitely get in touch with me I'm not hard to get a hold of so yeah anyway rambling on again all that being said I have so I've been working at home and we kind of shifted slowly into me being over time like my income used to be like a side thing and now it's like much more of an important part of my husband and my income we this is a big this is a big thing we moved from Hawaii to the mainland we're now living uh, nestled in the bible belt which I absolutely love I love it here it's so beautiful everyone is so nice and friendly and conservative and Christian and or at least culturally Christian which is a lot better than like new age and stuff and you know I, I spent my whole life in very liberal new age places um so just now that I am and I do believe God had me in those places for a reason and I'm super grateful that for the time that I spent there and the way just the way that I was positioned to seek him and to find him it it you know has everything to do with the place that I was in but now that we're raising children and we were so starved for fellowship for so long it is a huge blessing to be surrounded by and you know we go to a wonderful church here it's a huge uh, christian homeschooling community where we are which is a big blessing there's a lot of great resources for homeschool families and just yeah just raising our kids that is a blessing to me because i believe fully now after spending a long time feeling like i was didn't need church or it was just impossible to find a good church like we just kind of slowly shaved away our kind of snobby you know uh ideas of what this like perfect church it would be perfectly synchronistic with our particular fringy views we've like slowly oh here come my co-hosts Sorry, they're, they're here now, so you will hear the, um, once again, if you've never listened to anything I've done, I'm usually joined by these little guys who are very loud and awesome, and I love them, and I just decided to go with that because A, I don't have a lot of quiet time to re- sit down and record a podcast, and B, like, it just kind of, you know, like, sets the scene for I'm just this, like, stay-at-home mom that <laughs> records a, a podcast when she gets these random whims of creativity. And so, yeah, anyway, we, we did find a wonderful church. We have, you know, decided over the years, after all this time of, you know, we didn't want to go to a church that didn't believe this. We didn't want to go to a church that taught this, this and that, you know. We have just kind of shaved it all down to a church that preached from the Bible, the legitimate gospel that was genuinely seeking his will and following his will. And, you know, there are many things about our church that is, you know, more mainstream, the like dirty word among the internet Christians. But, you know, I don't think mainstream is so bad. False church, yes. 
cultural Christian church, yes. This word you hear a lot, churchianity, where it's the church that people are following rather than the Bible. Yes, all that stuff is wrong and we need to be wary of it. And there's a huge percentage of Christian churches these days that aren't teaching the truth or that have been infiltra- infiltrated by lies and false teachings. But, you know, all that being said, a church doesn't have to be all fringy and hip with, you know, conspiracies and things like that to be genuinely preaching from the word of God, the legitimate gospel. And what I absolutely love about our church is I believe most of the members there are pre-trib and Calvinist, which does not apply to me and my husband. And these are things that we used to feel really strongly about. But, you know, everybody that we have interacted with the, the church is like fully living for the word of God and studying it and trying to grow in it and fellowshipping. There are uh, lots of different events or really more like fellowship groups um, throughout the week. We There's a life group. There are different, there's college ministry, there's women's ministry, there's kids ministry. And it's not, you know, it's not just like a social club thing. It's like people are getting together and studying the word and praying for each other and growing together in Christ. You know, we went to a church before that we loved the members there. They were very important to us in our early walk, but other people would come and it was clearly just like a thing to do on Sunday. You could tell that they liked the singing and the free food and genuinely enjoyed going there, but they weren't, their day-to-day life wasn't about Jesus. Everybody we have interacted with at this church, their day-to-day life is about Jesus. This isn't a hobby for them. It is, they're fully, you know, committed, born again, Bible-believing, you know, Christians. And it is a creationist church. It is a traditional gender role church. So those are two really, really big issues to me and to us, especially with children. Um, There's lots of homeschooling families. There's just a wonderful children's ministry. And I can tell that they, like, genuinely care about our kids and are teaching them about the bible and i've met other parents there who are just you know really encouraging to me as far as raising up children in a biblical way and who aren't afraid to say like hey like you should be doing xyz with your kids like not in a you know unsolicited advice kind of a way but in like you know like i know that you believe the bible and i know that you're using it as your model for parenting so like this is what i've learned you should try it out kind of a way that i really appreciate like i was raised in such a touchy-feely, tolerant, absolute morality doesn't exist. Everybody should be allowed to do what they feel like kind of a way that it is like refreshing to me to have people discuss parenting in in an absolute moral kind of a way. And I'm a big fan. (laughs) I'm a big fan of like understand, you know, not judging other people's parenting to a point because I really know like I screw up so much as a parent and I have like behavior issues with my kids that I know I created from allowing them to do certain things and in a lot of ways like this is one reason I'm a huge proponent of staying at home and being a full-time parent is that I like can't commit enough to disciplining my children because I have to work. And I know that there are a lot of bad behavior that I'm working on and I still have faith that I can try to turn that around. But you really need to be give your be able to give like a hundred percent of your focus to your kids. And that's what I wish I could do. And you know, if anybody out there can't do that either, like I'm totally not trying to guilt trip you because I feel the same way. Even if you're not the one with your kids all day long, like I've hang on a second see this is like there's an incident happening right now that's like totally the kind of thing that my kids have learned and here i am not disciplining them so one second anyway sorry yeah so anyway just being in a being in a fellowship environment that where there is actual loving graceful admonishment to adhere to the word that is an incredibly valuable thing and if you can find that that matters more than all the rapture views, all the conspiracy, all the Nephilim stuff, all the 9-11 was an inside job stuff put together. That is what fellowship is for. Fellowship doesn't have to be with people who are just like you. In fact, we're probably going to learn and grow way more from people who are different than us. Anyway, yeah, so just, you know, a legitimate Bible-believing church is just such a blessing and I believe that you can find it I know some people just really don't live in areas where you can find a good church but don't stop trying don't stop praying for one because they are out there and they don't have to be perfectly suited to your beliefs 
um, and to the things that you're into and you might really benefit um, and grow from it if they're not actually. So yeah, uh, that is an update on um, what I've been up to and so now we are, my husband and I are both working full time. I'm working now, I was working in web marketing before and now I'm working as a freelance writer, which is such a huge blessing. I will spare you the story of how that all got started because I don't just ramble on and on again. (laughs) I'll probably talk more about it and talk a bit, just a bit more about being a work at home mom in general. I'd like to make a few videos just about that and um, encouragement and advice for moms that want to do that or who already are doing that. So keep your eye out for that if that is something that appeals to you, either finding work at home or managing working at home or becoming a freelance writer as well. So moving on, I want to talk about my plans for this podcast and for my ministry in general. So as I said, you know, assuming that you are interested in that, (laughs) um, this whole episode is pretty much just going to be like catching up what's coming and probably a little bit of commentary towards and just to give you something more than just me blabbering about myself and my ministry. But anyway, I have resolved to do a regular weekly or bi-weekly podcast of commentary. I am super interested in lots of things. I have lots to say about lots of things. I have, I've always been kind of a political junkie, but I've gotten um, much more interested in what's going on in current events and politics, obviously, throughout the election. And I feel like there are a lot of really, really important things for the awake Christian to be paying attention to. And um, there is a reason that I am now identifying much more as a conservative there are a lot of it you know a lot of us kind of get into this left right paradigm is false idea and i was like that for a long time and i do think that the this kind of false narrative that there's only one of you know you can only be one of two belief systems is very false because there are many many different factions within each party and within the left and the right and you know all these different factors and all these different overlapping beliefs and i as somebody who went from the far left to the right, I would not say I'm far right at all, although I'm, I, 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 no, I'm not at all, I'm not a libertarian, I am a conservative, and, uh, there are, I, I will probably, you know, kind of explain over time why I, that is, it is in line with my beliefs that, ha- the beliefs I have had for a while, which is basically that the, I think the United States should adhere to the standards that are put forth in the Constitution. I don't worship the Constitution. I don't think it's perfect. I think it is an incredibly unique document, and we are blessed to live in a country that is governed by it. I'm grateful for the United States. I don't think it's perfect. I think that the United States has done a lot of messed up things as the United States, and I think U.S. businesses have done a lot of messed up things. I don't think that we're the first country in the history of the world to do messed up things, and I don't think we're the first country in the history of the world where people kind of make an idol out of their country. I don't, however, think that appreciating your country and identifying as a Republican or as a conservative is automatically idolatry. Um, and the reason for this is essentially, I'll try, I'll try to, I'm not good at summing things up if you haven't noticed, but um, essentially, the right and the left are not two sides of the same coin in terms of morals. And it just so happens that the right is vocally speaking up for things that matter to Christians. Whether or not you trust the, you know, the higher up Republican politicians or not, I do happen to think that a lot of our uh, elected officials within the House and even the Senate are genuine Christians sometimes. Maybe I wouldn't agree with them about everything theologically, but they're speaking truth. And, you know, truth is truth no matter who's saying it and no matter why they're saying it. And when we have huge issues in our country that pertain to Christians very much, like abortion, like um, issues of homosexuality, like our rights as parents, things that are interfering with our ability to practice our faith. While we are very blessed in this country still, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that we are persecuted in this country as Christians. There are incidents of Christians being persecuted in this country, absolutely, and that is increasing. But that doesn't mean that we aren't very blessed as Christians in this country, especially compared to places in the Middle East and Asia where Christians are legitimately, you know, taxed, uh, dragged out of their homes and beaten and killed. You know, that's, that's the kind of persecution that's talked about in the Bible. 
And that might happen to us one day, but right now we live in a country that is supposed to protect our rights as Christians. So while I don't look to the government to bring about the absolute morality of God at all, I look to the kingdom for that, I don't put my faith in elected officials. I put my faith in God. But I do would prefer (laughs) some politicians to be in office over others. The very good example of that being Donald Trump was insanely preferable to me over Hillary Clinton. I do not think he is the same, and I I think he's proving that he's not the same as her. Whether or not he's being used for some larger scale Hegelian scheme to deceive Christians, I am going to keep myself you know, girded and prepared to see that. And I'm not going to be that disappointed if that turns out to be true because I've been expecting it all along. But at the same time, I am happy to see the things that he has been doing. They are policies that in, you know, from a secular standpoint, a government standpoint, as a conservative, I approve of. And yes, I am a conservative because I'm a Christian, because I don't think that conservative, uh, American conservatism and Christian values are synonymous. But there's a lot of parallels, and there are a lot of reasons why I, as a Christian, believe in conservative values. And also, just in a vacuum, from a secular perspective, I do think that it it is best that our country adhere to the values, um, as I said, the standards put forth in the Constitution, which is what you're founded on. Like, we we should play by our own rules, basically. And this country was the first country in the history of the world that recognized that we have natural rights given to us by a creator. That's, you know, it's just kind of an interesting, un- unprecedented thing. And I think it is, I just think it's interesting, you know. I, I really enjoy history. I'm, I am, have always been interested in politics and the way fallen man tries to enact justice. I, yeah, I, that's what it is. It's not, it's not any kind of answer to the fall, you know, it's, well, it is, it's an attempt at answering the problems of the fall, but we know what ultimately solves the problems that were created by the fall. And that's where our faith and our trust is in. And that's where my, my, all of my spiritual energy is invested in. And politics, like I said, is like almost a hobby to me. It's just interesting. But I think a lot of things that we're seeing happening in this world are very relevant. And um, we're never told that every leader in the world is going to be all in for the Antichrist and puppets of him um so it's just interesting to see the way things are playing out and something that we all thought was right around the corner this you know new world order fascistic um kind of technocratic government seems threatened by donald trump and that is compelling to me as somebody who it you know kind of keeps my eyes on the global environment and the ways that the new world order seems to be established so you know hey let's just sit back and <laughs> you know, see what happens. Cause I don't know about you, but I have all my faith in the kingdom and all my peace, uh, in Jesus Christ and in the Lord and whatever happens, happens. I know what happens in the end. So, um, I would like to do a, as I was, (laughs) that was my explanation of what, what kind of podcast I'm doing. Gosh, I'm long winded. Um, I'd like to do a, a weekly, uh, just discussing current events and things that and I'll probably you know have current events as far as what's happening in the news from this perspective of a kind of you know awake Christian mom parent um and that that brings me to my next point is that I had started a podcast called Families on the Fringe with God's Property Radio Sam who started God's Property Radio with uh Dan who's no longer involved as far as I know he's taking a break from God's Property Radio I think the whole operation is kind of on hold if you check the archives for that show or his uh newer podcast hallelujah he's got a wonderful ministry over there he you know he's my brother in christ and i was so excited to get that going with him and he and i kind of thought that up just having having talked about you know we're both parents actually our kids are like um our younger children have the same birthday and our older children are really close in age and 
he's like the same age as my husband. So we're like, you know, very similar families um, at homeschool, Christian, awake families. And one thing I loved about GPR, their, their podcast, when I first found it, is that these were two young parents like me talking about raising your kids in this world. And they're also really into the, the, the health aspect of things. And that is like one thing that, you know, I'm really into natural health and, you know, I'm a non, we're, yeah, we are a non-vaccine family. Um, we don't vaccinate our kids. We try to eat really healthy. We're into natural health. Very, very skeptical of the mainstream health industrial complex. And there are a lot of juicy little truth nuggets there as far as who originally founded AMA and the American Medical Association and who like has stock and health insurance companies and all things like that. It definitely seems like the healthcare industry is a huge facet of this, you know, Rockefeller depopulation funding. It was it was the Rockefeller fellers that founded the AMA, by the way. So, you know, I wanted to to kind of lend a hand with what they were doing and start this podcast. It was just going to be like a series of families on the fringe talking about everything that pertained to families from this perspective and for the fringy perspective. That, of course, I actually have a second episode of that recorded almost completely on my computer that I've never edited. And I've just, it's been, oh, I hate that feeling of having something on the back burner for so long. And, but now that he's putting a pause on GPR in general, um, I decided to just kind of merge them together. I think that I will take, hey, calm down. Sorry, speaking of families on the fringe, right? Here's my little family joining me. Um, I think that I might take families, the concept of families on the fringe and do like a series on my YouTube channel, maybe even do like a live stream or and or interviews with people who know way more than I do about natural health or natural birth or, you know, health related. What? I don't know. I don't know what you're saying, cutie pie. Yeah. Oh, I don't know what he said. <laughs> oh, he's just coming back. Is it a moose? Yeah. Oh, cool. They're seeing lots of animals. I, I get to the great pleasure of confirming their identification. Oh, it's an alligator. Alligator has teeth. Alligator does have teeth. Good job. I got some little geniuses over here, if I do say so myself. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, uh, I I love the idea of Families on the Fringe. I definitely want to keep going with it and just have more to this ministry than me blabbing about what I think about stuff all the time. Although, to my surprise, people seem to enjoy it. So praise God for that. And I do ask for prayers. Like, I... It's my constant prayer with my ministry that God could just use me to reach people. Um, as I said, with the things that, you know, he's ministered to my heart. And yeah, I like to talk and collect information and share little tidbits and draw conclusions and things like that. So if that could bless somebody else for God's glory, then that is the purpose. And then it would be all worth it. So um, please keep this ministry in prayer and my family as well so that I can fit it into my family in a way that glorifies God. And that's not taking away from my family's time. So, yeah, so just look for, I will try to be doing weekly, I'm, I'm totally saying this for accountability too, so I do it, but like weekly or bi-weekly podcast just talking about things that are going on in the world or maybe like articles I've seen online that I think are really indicative of the state of mind of our current generation or society or whatever, you know, things like that. If you have stuff you want to send to me, I actually was recently contacted by um, a big anti-vaccine research mom who, that is something that like I don't have all the, a lot of the research under my belt. I have enough to make informed decisions about whether or not I wanted to vaccinate, but like I don't actually, to my shame, I don't keep up with the the you know the laws and there's actually a law going up uh, in my state here that I really should learn more about and so anyway this this anti-vax mom who had found my blog um, sent me some articles about what is going on so in my next episode I'll probably dissect those and check it out and do some of my own research and talk a bit about that talk a bit you know keep keep an eye on my YouTube channel because a lot of the really 
<laughs> my kids are so silly. A lot of the really crazy stuff that's been going on just with, you know, protesting and women's march and feminism and all that crazy, annoying stuff. Um, I have been commenting on, uh, on my blog. I have a few videos up there about the last few. So my first video was right after the inauguration. So I have a few videos uh, since then just about mostly current events. And um, I will probably keep making those, you know, short little videos. Just um, if you have a few minutes to hear me blab, that's what they're good for. And yeah, so as I said, like for accountability, I hope I'll be doing that weekly or bi-weekly. I will keep trying to get maybe one or two videos up a week, uh, maybe three. I often get like random bursts of inspiration and record a video and throw it on there and um it's actually sometimes easier than writing a blog post surprisingly and I will always be writing writing is my passion it was kind of the only talent that I have other than talking which I don't even know if I'm that good at talking um but I do love writing and I work as a writer so I'm constantly kind of growing in my craft and getting paid for it which is awesome so I, I would really really like to translate that into my blog and put more work and effort into it so I need your help if you believe in my ministry if you enjoy my ministry if you uh want to help me out in any way I the biggest way you can help me out is just share things that I do that you like just you know share it on your Facebook page in groups on Twitter whatever you know how to do it you're probably a millennial and you know how to use the internet but you have no idea how much it helps out bloggers and podcasters and youtubers to share their content and to also this is the other thing that's just as valuable and I don't actually get a lot of this I get direct feedback from people which I really appreciate but just you know like a post like a video subscribe to my youtube channel that's a big you know 75 percent of my views have been from people who haven't subscribed so you know subscribing helps a lot and yeah commenting on my blog like on my site i love comments i don't get a lot of them i feel like a lot of people just don't feel compelled to comment on blogs it, you know people comment more on things that other people have shared on social media um comment on my facebook page like i if all of that help like getting any kind of feedback at all is like even if it's like you know a, a disagreement i'm totally open for like iron sharpening and it, like it honestly i really like i welcome criticism and feedback um openly because you know i might not agree with what you say especially if you're like an atheist or a liberal or something um but i feel like it's always a great opportunity for me to learn um or you know to be tested to 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 try to be patient and graceful if it's something that i don't agree with that you say like you know, just feedback is the best because otherwise, like, you know, those of us who are putting our effort into this, these online ministries, we don't want to be talking to an empty room. So, you know, let me know if you like all my blabbing and my little thoughts about stuff and the kind of stuff I would love to hear what you would like me to like research and look into and put the effort into finding out about. I'm, I'm into research. I like it. I think I'm relatively good at it. Um, so I don't want to just be talking about my opinion all the time as much as I like to talk about my opinion. I want to share valuable resources for you, um, as an end times woman or mother or wife or even man, if you are listening to this as a man, you know, God bless you. Like I am a believer that women shouldn't teach men. So please don't think that I'm trying to get up here and teach to a co-ed audience. I do have strong opinions about doctrine. And if I ever sound like I'm teaching, it is absolutely not my intention to be. I, there are things that I feel strongly about teaching other women that need other women need to hear about. I, it's mostly stuff that I'm still learning. Trust me. I don't fancy myself to be any kind of expert in anything, but you know, the ways that feminism has infiltrated the mainstream church as a former feminist, I feel like, um, I've researched it a lot and I can see the ways that it is infiltrating the mainstream church that other people aren't always picking up on. So that is something you'll hear me pontificate about a lot, but yeah, like I said, I'm not trying to, uh, to teach really a lot unless I'm just saying like, this is super important that I believe in strongly that to be true, if that makes any sense at all. Um, so we are about 45 minutes in and I have, uh, mostly just, <laughs> once again, 
Um, just kind of wanted to update and, you know, uh, share what is going to be going on in the future. If you've listened this far, thank you so much for listening. I promise the next in episode will be a proper podcast and not just a kind of catching up um, update episode. And um, hopefully this has still been entertaining or informative to you. And as I said, like, please, I'd love to hear back from you, suggestions, comment, feedback, prayers, anything at all. It just helps me so much and it makes it all worth it. So thank you once again for listening. And oh, yeah. And as I said, please send me anything, you know, interesting articles you find or news stories or, you know, commentary that you think that I would enjoy or maybe could talk about. And... I will totally do that. So, um, yeah, thank you once again for listening. I love you guys. Please let me know if you have any prayer requests. Um, I love to pray for you all. And um, until next time, (laughs) until next time, take care and God bless. Bless. Bless.